So a couple days ago, I was browsing Kijiji, which is kind of like the Craigslist of Canada, and I found this listing for a thousand free CDs. This guy is just giving away 1,000 CD-ROMs. I have no idea what I'm gonna do with these things, but I know that I can use them to make something cool. Hey, Steven. Where did I put those? <laughs> There's quite a few. Yeah. Well, take what you can. Take them all. I want to take all of them. Yeah. If you can. I want to make something crazy with them. So the more, the, the more, the better. Yeah. These are my classroom. As a school teacher, I start. I taught audio production. You don't know what to expect. So throw one in your car on the way home, and you're gonna go to high school. We were the best in the world, and, and I'm not sh you. All right, I've been listening to this CD and I have to show you track six. Woo. This is Boom Boom by Demo Cates, Nick Sutherland, Liam Tickcomb, and Justin Juice Cates. I mean, I would use this song in one of my videos. Steven was right, this does not sound like high school students. Boy, this is a lot. This is insane. <laughs> well, first things first, every single one of these CDs is shrink wrapped. So we gotta take all this shrink wrap off and avoid starting an avalanche in the meantime. Let's get started. One thousand. Oh my gosh. Only took an hour and a half, but we got it. Next step, we got to take every one of these out of the jewel case. I think this is going to be a lot faster. Let's do it. I got the rhythm down. Do anything a thousand times and you get pretty fast at it. <laughs> 998, 999, and 1000. So these jewel cases are actually recyclable and we can recycle all these as well. There we go, 1,000 CDs. It doesn't look very impressive like this. Give me one second. This is not even all the CDs. There's still 260 on the table saw that I wasn't able to fit on the table. I think we're gonna be able to do something really cool with these. So here's the thing. When I first picked up the CDs, I had this vision to make some wild piece of furniture or art piece and then sell it. So I made a little video to gauge interest. So I just picked up a thousand free CDs. Some guy was just giving these away and I wanna use them to make something awesome. So if you want a crazy coffee table, a giant disco ball, some wild piece of art, let me know and let's make it happen. Oh, and it is definitely going to be a YouTube video. Posted it to YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok. Got some great response. People were super excited to see what I was gonna do with these 1,000 CDs. And I even got a few project proposals. But to be honest, none of them really excited me. So I waited a couple weeks for the right person with the right idea to come along until I realized that that person is probably me. I got an idea that is so cool that I don't even wanna sell the resulting piece. I wanna keep it for myself. The thing I wanna make depends on the reflective sides of the CDs. And to maximize that effect, I'm gonna take each CD and glue it back to back with another one. I made this super simple 3D printed jig to hopefully make this process fast 
and painless. So let's get to it. There we go, 500 double-sided CDs. And I guess at this point, I should let you in on what I have planned. So I got this idea as I was stacking up CDs. And I thought that if you stack these all in one big column with a little bit of space in between each CD and then shown a light out from the center, you could have a really cool light fixture. And what if the light source was multicolored and programmable and you could have the light flowing up and down? That effect is possible with individually addressable LEDs. We'll talk more about these later, but I got a strip with a crazy high density. I think there's 144 LEDs per meter in this strip. The downside is that I also picked up this acrylic tube to make the skeleton of our light fixture. So my idea was I could stack the CDs on this tube with some spacers in between like this, although a lot smaller. And then I could put the LED strip through the middle of the tube. Finding the acrylic tubes of the correct size has been next to impossible. I thought that this one was correct, but my awesome LED strip is too wide to fit inside. I scoured the internet, my local plastic suppliers, none of the insides were wide enough to allow for this 12 millimeter wide LED strip. So I came up with another idea. I picked up some clear 3D printing filament and I designed these connectors. These, I hope, will work as the skeleton for my light fixture. Though the way they work, they fit perfectly into the center hole of the CD. They nest into one another and provide a space in between each CD. So with a little bit of super glue, I'm hoping that these will be strong enough to make our column. Start with one connector, one CD on top. This piece sticks slightly above the surface, so we can put some super glue on the top edge. This is PET G, by the way. And then the next one clicks over the one below it. Repeat times 497. All right, so here is where we're at. It's actually been about a week since I built this stack because I had to take some time to solve some problems with this design. The first problem, you probably actually saw me solve in the time lapse. I was worried that it would be really difficult to push the LED strip through that center hole because it's a pretty tight fit. So I attached it to this balsa wood trim piece and then pushed that whole assembly through the center holes. I'm glad I did it at this stage because there was a lot of friction. I was barely able to push it through. And then from here, I can just slide each CD and connector over the whole thing. So that solves that problem. The second problem you can probably see right now, this thing is super bendy. Look at this, it's like, it's almost like a slinky. <laughs> this is actually a good problem to have. I was worried that the 3D printed connectors plus the super glue connections wouldn't be strong enough and they would crack the moment that this flexed at all. But as you can see, this can flex a good amount and there is no cracking. But because of the height that I wanna make this, it's just gonna get more and more bendy as it gets higher and higher. So I need to stiffen this up. What I did was I bought a six foot long, half inch steel black pipe that I'm going to join to the tower. That solves our stiffening problem, but I need a way to link them together. So I took some time and designed this 3D printed base. This is the biggest thing I've ever 3D printed. It took about 500 grams of PETG filament. I'm so grateful I have the X1 Carbon. It still took 13 hours to print on that thing, but I don't even wanna think about how long this would take to print on a slower printer. So this has a few functions. So it will hold the CDs, boom, just like that. But it's also very tall. The reason for this is that I need a power supply to power the LED strips. So this stand has a slot inside to hold the power supply. This slot in the back is to hold our black pipe. There's vent holes to vent the heat generated from the power supply. This took a fair amount of design time, but I'm pretty sure I thought of everything. This is also only one part of the base. I also designed this sort of foot to add balance. This goes on top. 
boom, that goes in there. The wider footprint of this base will add stability. And I added a cavity in the inside to add weights so we have a nice solid foundation. So I added this interface between the top and the bottom pieces as well as an indentation for this so that these should have a nice strong joint. Carefully align these. So before I attach the two parts of the base, I wanna get the power supply all set up. Funnily enough, this power supply does not come with a cord or a switch. I cannibalized this from something else and I got a switch. Now we just gotta put them all together. This is probably a good point to say that I am not an electrician and none of this is professional advice. Do not try this at home. So this power supply takes AC power and outputs five volts at 20 amps to this controller. There's a lot of options for controlling individually addressable LEDs, and this one was the best for my needs. This is an all-in-one controller. It has Bluetooth connectivity, very simple to use. You just input the power there. These three wires output to your LEDs, and as long as your power supply is right, you're good to go. So here is the positive output of our power supply and the negative. So the next thing we have to do is connect the controller to the LED strip, but as you can see, I cut the connector off the strip to fit this through the center holes. So we're gonna have to solder this directly on to these tiny terminals. All right, I'm not a professional solderer, but I've done a little bit. And we only have one, two, three sets of terminals that we can ruin. So I'm gonna try to tin each contact to start. Oh, it's so tiny. All right, I think that's tinned. Two, big block of solder on there. All right, so red is positive, and green is this middle one. Not a great connection. And then white is ground. Gotta be careful not to bridge those joints. All right, I think those might be connected. You know what, no, that is not good enough. I think to make this a little easier, I'm gonna try to cut this right next to the next LED. That way we can access the contacts a bit easier. There we go. All right, let's try that again. There we go, there's one, there's two, there's three. All right, that was already way easier. All right, three, there we go. All right, so all the electronics are hooked up. I think it's time to test this thing. I got the app downloaded on my phone. Probably should put some safety glasses on just in case. <laughs> Let's do this. Plugging in, power on. Whoa, searching devices. There we go, SP107E. Check that out. All right, it is working. Now I just gotta fit everything in here. Look, it even responds to sound. Boo, boo. This is so cool. <laughs> I'm so excited. This hole in the front is for the switch, so I gotta poke that through there. Ooh, this is a little tighter than I hoped for. So I thought I left enough room in there for the switch and the wires, but Apparently I didn't. So to make my life easier, I'm just gonna cut away this piece and then we should have enough room right there. And I think we should now have enough room. Yes, there we go. So now we can put the pipe inside. Oh my God, <laughs> it is just tall enough. I am touching the ceiling. I mean, I might even have to angle it a little bit to get it started. Oh my gosh. Oh, perfect fit. If I poke it slightly out of the bottom, put some glue all around here. And very carefully, 
Bring it down. Oh, it's a tight fit. <sighs> Might need a bit of persuasion. Hammer, there we go. There we go. Bead of super glue. All right, I think we're there. All right, now for the next tricky step, we gotta get the CDs on top and plug in this connector. This is when having a second person would be so helpful. One of these days I'll hire someone, but today is not that day. <laughs> All right, um, I guess we just gotta do it. Luckily this isn't super heavy yet, although with all the CDs on here, it's gonna get very heavy, very fast. Okay. So I guess I can like hold it one-handed while plugging this in. Okay, that actually wasn't too bad. Okay. We are plugged in. And the CDs are resting on top. All right. <laughs> One step closer. <laughs> and then to actually hold this tight against the pipe, I'm just gonna use some fishing line. This is super thin fishing line, so it will definitely be invisible. So I can just go through the connector, tie a bow line. I think this might actually work. Nice, all right. Wow, that is working really well. It's holding it nice and tight to the, to the pipe as long as we do it every like few inches or so. Amazing. Whew. Now that we got this all shored up, let's get back to stacking. I'm in Whew. That activator was starting to make me a little lightheaded. Respirator is a definite must. So we've almost reached the top of this LED strip and now we need to add on our second one. Conveniently, this strip already has jumper wires soldered on, but I need to cut them as short as possible. I wanna maintain this tight spacing of LEDs so you don't even see the joint here. So it's time for some more precision soldering. Now we just gotta plug it in. See if it works. Whew. All right, moment of truth. In three, two, one. Yes. Let's go. Woo, that is going. Well, now that this thing is officially taller than me, let the stacking continue. So after a week of stacking, I finally finished building up the lamp. This thing looks a little wild when it's lit up. I'm curious if my fiance is even gonna like it, but she'll be home in about five minutes, so I guess we'll find out. Okay, you can come in. All right. It's a little wild. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> Should've like warned me, good thing I don't have a seizure disease. Oh my goodness, Morley. Wow, it's like a giant, Lifesaver popsicle. Wow, this is, wow. This is yeah, quite something. It's kind of wild. <laughs> it is a little, little wild. Abby, hey, I no mean, fighting. it almost looks like it should be in an arcade. <laughs> like it almost looks like it should be in a sex shop. <laughs> <laughs> but like it provides nice ambient lighting like for reading right here. Yeah. Like if you're reading a book, it's nice. Uh-huh. It's a lot of CDs. <laughs> this is definitely one of those projects where like, I'm not sure if I like it. That's fair. There's, <laughs> there's a lot of different... Welcome to hell. <laughs> <laughs> the green one's like, ah, I'm Irish. Like a lot of these would be really fun for parties. Yeah. We just need to get some friends. Can you like, it's making me queasy. Can you just make it stop moving? Yeah, I'll go to one of the solid colors. There's like a okay. hundred and something... Um, oh my God. Uh, patterns. And I can also like change how far... This is like a forensic light. We can also change it to the uh, sound sensitive version. 
Here, start talking. I don't know if I like this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe not the sound sensitive one. We'll go more. Uh, Can we go stuff. like just regular light, like white, whitey yellow. Here we go. Here's white. Mm. It's it's hard to make it <laughs> very bright. I can turn the brightness down a little bit. <laughs> mm. Why don't you not stand so close? Maybe then you won't get nauseous. <laughs> Whoa! It's just wow. It's, there's just so much. Just a lot going. Do you? On. Oh, it's a Christmas light. <laughs> Do you like it? I, I don't know what to think about it. Like, I'm really yeah. satisfied with having made it. But Yeah. Um, Execution, 10 out of 10. It's it's just pretty wild. Proof of concept, 10 out of 10. Will you sell millions? No. <laughs> <laughs> I think... Uh, I really like the red and the purple. Oh, my the Lord. The red and the purple? This one? Yeah. Wait, let me go back. Like, in a, in a I hate it way. You know what this is reminding me of? What? In the office when... Um, Michael and Jan have the dinner party and Michael shows everyone his plasma. A lot of people in the room, you need more space. Voila, right into the wall. Wow. Whoa, what is happening? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what to call this one. It's like hockey dressing room. I just want, I want a vanilla light. Like I want like a <laughs> white, yellow, just glow. I think Eden was right. This thing fits way better in here and I'll make a more vanilla light fixture for the living room. This sound sensitive mode is still kind of crazy. Maybe I should change it to something a little more chill. Maybe a little light blue. There we go. That's kind of nice. If you want to see what I'm up to behind the scenes, you can gain exclusive access to the behind the scenes Instagram page by supporting this channel on Patreon. I want to give a special shout out to my top supporter on Patreon, my mom, Kathy Kurt. Thanks mom, I love you. Penny, look at the camera. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Mwah.